So our first speaker is Sandy. She's an astronomer at Gemini North, and she will talk about the proposal mod overview. Sandy, you can now share your screen and you'll have 15 minute talk followed by five minute Q&A. Thank you. So let me get the correct screen. Um, is that okay? Can you hear me? Can you see my slide? Yes, perfect. Okay, very good. So I will be describing the various ways you can get data um, at Gemini. My goal is that by the time I'm done, you'll know how to get the data you need in the time frame that you need it. But um, if you still have questions at the end, um, I do have a chat session open later today and tomorrow. And um, also, please go ahead and check out um, the Gemini research staff. I've got the link posted here. We all um, love to see science taken at the telescope and are very happy to, to help our users. So feel free to, to reach out to us. I've also got the link to our help desk system on this, on this slide. And the slides are available as a PDF in the Hoover app. So for those of you who might not be familiar with Gemini, we do have the two telescopes, um, north and south, which between them covered the entire sky. And all of the um, observing modes that I'll be talking about here um, are exactly the same between the two sites. And both telescopes have both optical and infrared um, instruments, um, as you would have heard yesterday. All the data from um, both telescopes go into our archive. So there's um, data in there for the last 16 years. So I encourage you to go look in there, see if there's something that you might be able to use. Um, PIs also get their data uh, from the archive um, and the proprietary periods are six to 12 months. Um, in any case, when you submit a proposal for, for observations, our um, the tool will automatically look at the archive and if there is anything that looks like a duplicate of what you are asking to do, it will be flagged and you'll need to justify um, why you need the new, the new data. So it, you know, it's to your advantage to go check out the archive. So um, we use um, what we call the phase one tool for all the observing modes, phase one, two, or all pit. So um, everything I'll be talking about next, you would use the same, you would use the same tool um, to submit your proposal. And I've got the, the link, um, the link here, which gives you, um, gives you an overview of um, phase one. And uh, this slide, um, it's, it's just it's a summary of the different modes. So you've got the um, this column has the, the name of the mode or type of observing. Um, the next column shows you the frequency at which we issue calls for new proposals. Um, this third column lists um, any constraints on the um, the affiliation with which the PI is associated. There's no constraint on COIs. And I wanted to highlight that the US does have an open sky policy. So any astronomer can go in um, through the US channel, although you do have to explain you know, why you need US facilities and don't have anything else available to you. This next column is the typical number of hours available in each mode for a given six month period. 
at each telescope. Um, and then uh, this last slide is the um, uh, is, the, is the science band rankings. So the science that comes out of the time allocation committees is ranked um, in bands one through three, where one is the highest priority and band three is really just um, sort of filler observations for our queue. We are, um, especially in COVID days, really entirely a queue operated um, observatory. Band four, which is poor weather. So that's the lowest priority, but it's what we can do, what we do if um, we can, the weather's bad, but we can still be open. Um, and there are no band one to three observations um, left um, uh, available at that time. This is the same table, except um, the the third and fourth column and just giving you some information on um, the, the review process and the oversubscription. Um, so things I wanted to highlight in this slide in particular is that our fast turnaround, which is our monthly um, call for proposals, uh, students can be PIs or co-Is which means that they can take part in the reviewing of the proposals because fast turnaround proposals are reviewed by the other um, investigators in that cycle. The student is supervised, but this is a great way for students to um, get experience in both how to write you know, and review proposals. The other thing I wanted to highlight was um, standard semester programs, the oversubscription. Um, when you put in your, your proposal, you have to specify your observations, so your, your target, your instrumentation, the, um, and the observing conditions that you need. Um, and we find that, that typically uh, the best conditions, so dark time, photometric conditions with good seeing are oversubscribed by uh, about a factor of five or more, but the bright time, poor seeing, um, seriously conditions uh, only oversubscribed by factors of about two, two to three. So that's uh, something to bear in mind. So let's see. In this, in this slide, I'm now gonna talk about each mode with an example of the science that, that um, has been done through that mode. So this is my uh, slide for director's discretionary time. This was used to um, take data of our first confirmed interstellar visitor, uh, Oumuamua. Um, and the, the GMOS, observations that the light curve showed that it was that it had to be tumbling because the the large amplitude of the light curve meant we were seeing a very different size of um, reflecting the light um, as it as it uh, with with time it changed with time by a large amount and it did not the light curve did not repeat from one night to the next so director's discretionary time um, urgent and unique and um, high impact science. Fast turnaround for this um, uh, for this mode, I chose uh, some observations of white dwarfs. These white dwarfs were part of a larger survey, uh, and they appeared to have very broad hydrogen lines, um, which implied very high gravity and a very high mass, in fact, higher than the Chandrasekhar limit. But they, they got GMOS spectra and found that in fact, um, the lines had showed Zeeman splitting, so there was a magnetic field. And once the magnetic field was taken into account, the surface gravity and the mass um, decline. 
so the end result was an improved initial final mass relation for um, for these for these clusters. So fast turnaround program, good for completing a data set, um, a small project or a feasibility study. Standard semester programs. Um, so the example I chose here used regular um, proposal time in 2018 and 2019, but they also went to the archive and found data from 2010, which they um, included in their sample. So they, in the end, they got a good sized sample of galaxies. Um, uh, and they, with um, IFU data showing both continuum, um, the, the spatial distribution of both the continuum and the ionized lines. So standard semester programs, not urgent, can use the higher, um, the larger amount of time, RA range and instrumentation selection that um, some of the other modes do not offer. Larger non-programs, um, the example I chose here was is the is LP16, which so far is the program with the largest amount of time. They got almost 400 hours in three and a half years, and they have published um, near infrared spectra from more than 200 uh, quasars, and the data are available at at this link. So uh, larger non programs, projects require a lot of time or not necessarily a lot of time, but time over um, multiple semesters. So finally, before I wrap up, um, I wanted a couple of things I wanted to, to bring to your attention. Uh, one is that you can also get observing time on the Subaru telescope in Hawaii through the Gemini Subaru time exchange program. Um, and then proposal tips, things which I see PIs not being aware of. One is that the target of opportunity program is, um, you can use that not only for um, transients, but for any object that you don't have the coordinates for. So objects that are going to be found in an ongoing survey or uh, ongoing data reduction. And the other thing is um, we love doing cutting edge science and pushing the telescope to the to its and the instruments to their limits. Um, but if your science can handle slightly poorer seeing or a little bit of cloud, um, Put in a, propo a proposal using those poorer conditions. You will have less competition in the TAC and so more likely to get time. Um, and you can play with the instrument um, ITCs and experiment with the signal to noise um, for different observing constraints. And I will, um, sorry, wrong slide. It's not going forward. I will end. Um, I'll, with this is my last slide. I'll just leave it up um, and take questions. But um, it just lists the the um, the five modes, the frequency of their call, and notice that we we do have a regular call coming up um, in the next week. Um, a, a summary of of the application and the web page where you can get more information. So thank you. Thank you for your presentation, Sandy. And I guess your presentation is so clear, so there's no questions so far. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any questions, please place your questions at the Q&A, the FUBA app. And okay. If not, oh, there is a yeah, question. Okay. I was wondering how many FG proposals do you receive on average per month, which is the success rate? 
So it's about a factor of, of two, about half get time. Um, but it does vary with each month. And they go into band one and two, and we typically get, let's see, we get about um, six, well, I'm actually two to 10, so it's two to 10 new proposals, successful proposals a month, depending on the amount of time. It's, it's 20 hours a month that, that we can use this fast turnaround. Thank you. There's another question that the same constraints you just mentioned were at B, right? Not in the IR? Uh, that's right, the, um, in the visible and uh, at, the, at Zenith. Okay, now we have to move on. And thank you again for Sandy.